something that you've heard over and over here about those motivation preachers yeah. that have 70, and when he said this it just thrilled my heart, have 70, 80,000 people in their churches. And he says, then the poor little preacher at the Hesperia, he didn't say Hesperia Full Gospel <laughs> Church, but right away I thought of it, that has 30 people that's trying to preach Christ and Him crucified just thrilled me to think that there are others out there that believe the way I do. Folks, it's not numbers. It's not numbers. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's not quality. It's the, I mean, it's not quantity. It's the quality of what's being preached. And that quality is Christ and Him crucified. You all got that? Amen. Amen. I just wanted to share that. It just thrilled me this morning when I was Watching it, I didn't get to see the whole program because I had to get down here, but it was so good. Brother Brown, ask the Lord to bless as we get into His Word this morning, would you please? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the blessing to be able to come out and worship together. Yes. Lord, we thank you for a church that does preach the Word. God, we ask that you anoint our pastor as he brings forth the Word this morning. God, anoint our hearts and our minds that we're able to receive your word today. God, we pray, Lord, uh, in this church, God, that everything that's done here is for your glory. And we thank you in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'd like for you, if you would, this morning, turn to, <coughs> excuse me, Romans, the fourth chapter. And I hope you've all got your good old timey King James Version of the Bible. You know, the Bible tells us that we're not supposed to change a word, a jot, or a tittle of God's word. Did you know that? Did you know that, uh, Brother Anderson? Yes. That includes all these new translations, or perversions as I like to call them. The original, now the Greek and Hebrew, was the King James. Okay? And you say, well, I still have this one or I have that. Yes, but every one of them were taken from the King James, folks. They all took from that. So I don't care which one you're reading. Just remember what you're reading. They changed it. They changed the word here. They changed the word there. And that is against God's holy word. Amen. 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 Be careful. Be careful, sweetheart. It changes. One word can change the whole meaning. Thing, so be very careful. Chapter 4 of Romans, it says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? Think about this now. We're going to be reading more here. For if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen. Now, to him that worketh, is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand what that scripture means? Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. You and I are saved today by grace, friends, not by works. Right. For if you're working 
you're paying off a debt. But the song says he paid a debt that he did not owe. Amen. Amen. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. So no matter how much works you do, <laughs> you can't pay the debt. You have to accept the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Is that right, Brother Brown? Amen. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. Are you righteous today? Amen. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, He, God the Father, made him, God the Son, to be sin, says that knew no sin, Jesus knew no sin, that you and I might be made the righteousness of God the righteousness, we are God's righteous, we are God's righteousness today because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen? It also says in that same chapter that old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. Folks, this is so hard for some people to get a hold of. They just cannot grasp that you, listen, 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 listen. Speaking of your spirit, man, you are absolutely sinless if you accept Christ as having paid the debt for you. Y'all got that? Not the flesh, but the spirit. This is why we have to bring our body under subjection to our spirit. Hey, but don't you know you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? You've been born with the price. The Holy Ghost lives. You with me, uh, Pat? Okay, so that gets that far away look like some of the rest of you do. I want you to understand it is so important. All the other things that we do are without value if we don't walk by faith in God's righteousness through Christ Jesus to us. Is that right, Brother Brown? Amen. All right. All right. Now I'll go over to the 16th verse. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace you can't have faith in God if you don't accept His grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed. We are the seed of Abraham. Amen? Amen. But we're not, we don't become the seed of God until we accept the grace of His dear Son. Amen. If you're not saved, your father's the devil. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. You become a child of God. You become part of the family of God when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again, Jesus said. Amen? You Amen. must be born again. You're born of the seed of the Holy Spirit that's implanted in you. Amen? Amen. When you were born naturally, you were born of the seed of your father into the womb of your mother. You all got that? Amen. Now the seed of God is implanted in your spirit, man. Amen. Mm. Therefore, it is of faith that we might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, or not to the Jews only, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Paul was speaking now to Gentiles, and he says Abraham is also the father of us all. Is that right, Brother Brown? Amen. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know that he and I agree on God's word. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, talking to Abraham, before him whom ye believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Calleth those things which be not as though they were. Calleth the blood clot in your leg as though it be not, according to the word of God. Pat? Amen? amen. Oh, you chicken hearted. <laughs> say amen if you believe it, if you don't say amen. amen. And being not weak in faith, and being not weak in faith, he doesn't say, he doesn't talk about your offering. He doesn't talk about your singing. He doesn't talk about your giving. He doesn't talk about your work. Being weak, because many people are strong in these other things, but they're weak in their faith. Listen to what he says. And being not weak in faith, talk about Abraham, he considered not his own body, now dead, <laughs> when he was about 100 years old, 
neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Y'all understand what that's even saying? Unbelief will cause you to stagger or to waver or to vacillate back and forth. Right? Is that right? Unbelief. You believe God's word, you go forward no matter what it says. Amen. Amen. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. How many of us can give glory to God Amen. simply by faith in what His Word says, even though we don't see it? Amen. And being fully persuaded what He had promised, what God had promised, He was able also to perform. Now everybody say, oh, I know God's able. Oh, I know God. No, no, that's not, that's not the answer. If you look in and dwell in deep, Ed, dwell deep into it, you know he's not only able, he has done it according to his word. Is that right or not? Amen. Therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. What was it? Because he believed the promise before he saw the manifestation. Now it was not written for his sake alone that was imputed to him. But for us also, Paul saying, listen, what happened to Abraham? as an example, was for you today. Amen? Is that right? Amen. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe, if we believe, if we believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, yes, amen. who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Amen? Amen. amen. Oh, my goodness. In these scriptures that we read today, excuse me, I'm getting dry. When I get dry, my teeth stick to my tongue, and I'm afraid I'll spit them out here, here on the front row. <laughs> in these scriptures that we just read here in the fourth chapter of Romans, what did, what did Abraham do? He gave glory to God in faith. Amen? Amen? He gave glory to God in faith. I'm trying to get a point across to you today. What did he give glory to God for? What did he give glory to God for? He was fully persuaded what God had promised he was able to perform. He gave glory to God because he had faith in God's word. God spoke to him. Abraham had faith in it. God speaks to you from his word, friends. If you don't read it, you don't know what he has to say. Is that right, Brother Al? Amen. You see... God had not yet performed it. Amen. It had not yet come to pass. Boy, wouldn't, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be wonderful, think about this for a minute, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had enough faith to give God praise before we saw the manifestation of His promise? Wouldn't it be, this is all He's asking for. He's asking for you and I to begin to praise Him before we see the healing, before we see the deliverance, before we see our children brought into the family of God, before we see the things that we desire in our heart according to His Scripture, if we begin to praise Him. Part of what you were saying this morning, Rachel. Abraham counted it as done. Amen? He counted it as done. And he was given glory to God. I wish we could give glory to God more before it was manifested. We need to start giving glory to God. Yes, amen. When we wake up in the morning, before we go to sleep at night, as we drive down the road, give God glory that you're going to make it safe. Amen? amen. Give God glory that that backslidden husband is going to come to the Lord. Give God glory that that hateful, antagonistic, nagging wife is going to change. Amen? amen. Give God the glory. Believe God. Amen. You either... You, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. Well, that's a promise that you really haven't seen manifested yet. Have you, Pam? Have you seen it manifested? No. Oh, I feel Jesus inside. But you haven't, you haven't been raptured yet, have you? No. Nope. Okay. The manifestation of that scripture is when you're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. Amen. But the manifestation that Scripture now gives you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. The manifestation of that Scripture knows 
that you are saved. I believe I'm saved because of what that scripture says. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. I don't believe that scripture because I go to the full gospel church or go to the Catholic church or go to the Baptist church. I believe that scripture because it's written in God's word. Amen? Is that right, Levon? That's why we believe, because of what's written. We take it by faith, right, Sister Marie? Amen. Praise the Lord. You're somebody special. Dale, that's one of your favorite scriptures. I mean, one of your favorite sermons. You're somebody special. And you are. Each one of you in here are somebody special to God. And he wants that special person to begin to praise him and thank him for what he has already done. Did you notice... Did you notice, look at the 20th verse there. Did you notice verse 20 calls that strong faith? Before it was manifested, Abraham praised God. Listen, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, was strong in faith, giving glory to God. We become strong in faith when we begin to give glory to God and not waver and not vacillate back and forth. Amen. He was strong in faith, giving, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded this morning that I am saved and I'm going to heaven one of these days. I'm, Al, are you fully persuaded of that in your life? I'm fully, not, not because of anything I do, because I fall short of the glory of God every day, don't you? Amen. All right. But I'm fully persuaded because God says if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. Amen. Right. Well, how come you're always harping on uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together? Because when you don't assemble together, you miss what God has to say for you at that particular time when we come together. Amen? Amen. God wants to bless you as you hear His Word. Mm. Listen to me. Strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded. That's what the Bible calls strong in faith, being fully persuaded. If you're not fully persuaded that you're saved, honey, you're not saved. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're not fully persuaded that you're saved, you're not saved. Right. And you need to accept Jesus by faith. Jerry's wearing a cross. He's not saved because of that cross. He's saved because he has accepted Jesus. You all got that? You're not saved today because you're sitting in the front row. You're saved today because you've accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. You're not saved today because you give out food on Friday. You're saved because you've accepted. You are fully persuaded in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead by yes. God. Amen. That's why you confess it. Salvation is so simple, and yet people make it so hard. Accept Jesus. Listen, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else. If you are truly saved, then you'll begin to lay aside the weights and the sins that so easily beset you. The gossip, the anger, the bitterness, the jealousy, the resentment, and all these things, you'll begin to lay them aside. Why? Because you're saved. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will help you and lead you if you are truly saved. Are you judging my salvation? No, I'm not judging your salvation. But if I shake your tree and the fruit that falls off is rotten and spoiled and full of things of this world, then I, I don't know. You're judged by God's Word, not by me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, boy. Whatever Abraham was promised in God's Word, Abraham believed that he would do it. I believe, I believe according to the Word of God, by His stripes you were healed. I believe that. I believe it. You say, you don't have any, oh yeah, I got problems. I got problems. But I believe that by the stripes that were laid on Jesus' back, I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you, I believe what the Word says. Amen. It doesn't matter what the devil does to me. It's what the Word says. Right. Amen? That's right. Amen. And you believe that. Amen. <clears throat> now, if you, if you say yes to that, then you have what is called half faith. That's, that's the first half. The second half requires a yes to this question. Listen now, listen. Can you give glory to God? 
Can you praise God? Can you thank God for His promise before you see the manifestation of His promise? Amen. Can you praise and thank Him before you see the manifestation of healing? Can you praise Him and thank Him before you see the financial problem taken care of? Can you praise Him and thank Him before you see all these other things that you're whimpering and whining and moaning and groaning about? Can you praise Him? Amen. I praise You, Lord. I'm Your child. I belong to You. And I know You'll take care of the problem. I know You've taken care of the problem. I want to tell you again, and I've told you this so many times about Daniel. He prayed for 21 days. The answer didn't come. 21 days he'd been praying. Amen. All of a sudden an angel appears and says, the prayer, the answer was on the way the moment you prayed. The first day you prayed. I'm telling you today, the moment you pray in faith believing, the answer is on the way. I don't care what some Mickey Mouse preachers told you. Amen. That's what the Word teaches. Amen. The moment, if you're saved. Amen. If you're not saved, you may as well talk to these flowers. You're not going to get through to the Father unless you come through the Son. Amen. Is that right, yeah. Pam? Yeah. You all come to me today. This is important. This is why you're defeated. Mm. And I got to talk to myself this way too a lot. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you pray in faith believing, you believe that what you have asked according to God's Word, it will manifest itself. Yes. Amen. Because the answer is already on the way. Right. The angel said, Daniel, the answer was on the way the first day you prayed. But, now here's what the church doesn't understand. There is a devil out there. A powerful devil. A powerful devil. And he's fighting. He's so powerful that the angel that was sent originally, Satan was holding him back. So God sends another angel down there to help. So that the first angel can bring the answer to them. Folks, that's, that's not a fairy tale. That's why these Mickey Mouse Bibles that you get, that are cartoons that you're giving your kids, my friends, gets them to thinking it's all kid cartoon stuff. It's not. It's not Captain Marvel. It's not the Green Lantern. It's Jesus Christ, folks. Golly, Moses, why can't we get a hold of this? We are a powerful person. We are full of the Holy Ghost of God. We're the head and not beneath. God gave His Son that you might have victory over Satan. We all might have victory over... Is that right or not, Dale? That's why God gave His Son. You say, He gave His Son to save me from sin. Well, what the devil do you think sickness and disease is? It's sin, friends. Not that you're sinning. Sin is in the world and it attacks our body. It attacks our mind. It attacks our, our spirit. And we have to be strong in the Word of God. Strong in faith in God's Word. Amen? Amen. Right, Carol? Amen. 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 If the answer, if the answer is yes, then folks, you have strong faith. And I believe some in here have strong faith. Somebody say, well, the Bible says it's given to man the measure of faith. Well, you can let your measure of faith just lay there and go dormant if you want to. Right. Amen. Amen. You can get a nice cold glass of milk out of the refrigerator. Don't get it for me because I'm not crazy about a glass of milk. Unless I got some sweets out, you got some sweets. <laughs> and you can let it sit out in the heat and eventually that beautiful white glass of milk will become rancid. And he won't be able to drink it. Right. Many times that's what happens with our faith. We just let it dwindle and die. Instead of study God's Word, talk to Him, praise Him, and watch your yes, faith amen. begin. Your faith never rises any higher than your confession. Amen? amen? You walk around confession, doubt, confessing sickness, confessing all the... And you're going to find out. You're going to pretty soon see them manifest in your life. Think on, begin to think on the the greatness of God, to begin to think on the goodness of God, begin to think on His promises, begin to count your blessings. Amen? We need to count. You ever, you ever count your blessings? You ever go to bed at night and say, Lord, now I want you to know I got a terrible mattress. It was this bed and mattress was in my folks' house, and they've been dead for years, okay? And they had it for years. Anyway, I've got it now. 
The mattress is not the best, but you know, I thank God for that mattress. I could be sleeping out here under a bush somewhere. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the mattress. I thank God for the place that I have to sleep. I thank God for the, the blanket or the cooler, whatever. You understand? Thank God for your blessing. Quit moaning and groaning and complaining. And You know, I got to the place I hate to say, how you doing today? Oh. Uh, and by the time they get through and tell me, I feel worse than they do. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, I'm blessed. I'm saved today. Amen. We need to lift up our heart continually in praise and gratitude to God. Amen? Amen. 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 We need to we need to increase increase our praise for what He has done. Not only for what He has done, but for what He's still doing. Do you know at this very moment somewhere in the world, somebody's busting into a synagogue or a church and mowing the people down? Somewhere in the world, there's somebody getting their head cut off for their testimony for Jesus Christ. Somewhere in the world, right here in the United States of America, somebody is dying because they're starving to death. Amen? Amen. We need to thank God. I thank God that I'm able to stand here. I thank God I'm able to move. I thank God I'm able to lift up my hands and praise the Lord. I thank God that I still have breath in my lungs. I thank God that my blood is flowing. Amen. 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 Wow, we got so much to thank God for. We need to praise Him. Somebody look at Philippians 4 6 real quick. Turn to Philippians 4 6. Be careful. Do you even know what that word means in the Greek? <laughs> be careful. Or don't be distracted. Or don't or don't be anxious. Or don't be fretful. Okay. We fret about a lot of things, don't we? But Philippians 4 6 says, Be careful for nothing. But in everything, in everything, by prayer and Supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Amen. Does it say anything about begging and pleading, does it? No. Does it? No. <laughs> Some of you got problem with your grown children. Did you raise them up in the nurture and admonition of God? Did you slap their little bare bottoms when they screamed and yelled in the Walmart? Did you? And acted like a bunch of wild Indians? Huh? Did you? If you didn't, then don't come complaining to God. He tells you what to do. If you want the things to go the way He wants them, then you need to do things the way He tells you to do. As long, listen, as long as you're anxious and as long as you're fretful uh, about anything, I want you to know that praying and fasting is not going to do you any good. Is that right, Brother Brown? Mm -hmm. Now, the Scripture says, with thanksgiving, and this comes after praying about it, after you pray about it, give God thanks for the answer. You thank God for what you pray about in faith after you pray. Amen. Amen. This is true faith, my friends. This is true faith. When you thank God, even... I just got through saying, Lord, uh, I, got the, I got a bad, bad blood pressure. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm healed now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Thank you for whatever it is. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Well, I'll wait till I go see the doctor and he'll tell me her <laughs> blood pressure's down. Good golly. Folks, it amounts to thinking faith thoughts, speaking faith words that leads, listen to me, that leads the heart out of defeat and worry into victory. Brother Earl quoted this wrong Sunday. He said death and life are in the or life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's not what the Bible says. Death. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can speak death to yourself. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. All I'm supposed to do is tell you what the word of God says. It's up to you to take authority over the devil and begin to speak his word. Is that right, Pam? Yes. Amen. Is that right? I can't hear you. Yes. All right. If God promised it, dear sweethearts, if God promised it. It's yours right now. How many of you believe that? Raise your hand. If God promised it, it's yours right now. Amen. It's, are you saved right now, Ron? Amen. Then He promised that. Are you healed right now? I sure am. Raise your hand. Amen. All right. 
It's that simple. Carol, right now you're healed in the name of Jesus. That's what the Word says. I believe what the... I, 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 I don't believe what Brown or Anderson or... I started to say somebody. Uh, Ron, I believe what God's Word says. If God promised it, my friends, it's yours at this very moment. Amen? Right. Accept it, and I believe it will become a reality in your life the moment you accept it. Maybe, maybe we need to stop asking and start praising God for what is ours in the Scripture. Amen? Amen. Amen? Quit asking Him for something that Jesus already gave you 2,000 years ago. Right. Yeah. And I believe the answer would materialize much, much sooner, don't you? Amen. Begin to begin to act as though you uh, you've already received what you asked for. Amen. Act in faith. Act in faith. Act like a saved person. Act like a. How many? Let me ask you first. How many of you believe that you are a child of God? Amen. Now, I'm not talking about being born. No, no, that's not makes you. That doesn't make you a child of God. How many of you believe? that you are a child of God because you've accepted Christ as your Savior. Amen. Then you become part of His family. Amen. You are a child. You are His child. I thought I was Mark and Dolly's boy. Well, Dad looked at me when I was born and says, Dolly, that's it, no more. <laughs> no, no, I'm Christ's child because I accepted Him as my personal Savior. Then He says, I'm going to translate, I'm going to take you out of this wicked world of sin and translate you into my world, the world of my dear son, God says. Amen. Amen. You're, you're part of his family. You were part of Satan's family. You all got, oh, you're still, I'm still Mark and Dolly's flesh and blood son. But I was now put into God's family. I'm part of God's family. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. That's exciting to me. What does it mean to be a joint heir with Jesus? It means everything that's Jesus Christ belongs to me. Is that right, Pam? Yeah, that's right. Why do I keep asking her? Because she's done some studying in the past with some other groups. I want to make sure that whatever you study is in line with what we preach. Amen. Now, I want to give you a couple big don'ts for believers. Don't worry why God has not answered. <laughs> Don't worry why God has not answered. Or look around for reasons why He did not hear your prayer. Don't accept the delay in the answer as God's will for you. We know that He hears, and if He hears, He answers. Is that what the Word says? Amen. We know. I know that He hears our prayer. How do you know He hears? Because I'm His child. I'm talking to my Heavenly Father. Amen. I know that He hears. And the Bible says that He answers. We know that if he hears, he answers. Amen. Amen. You, oh, folks, listen. It's the word. We have to get the word. If we don't have the word, we don't have anything. You, you are, you are automatically defeated many times because you fail to hold firm in unwavering, unwavering faith in God for the answer. What does the Bible say? He's unstable in all his ways. What is that? Double-minded man. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Thank you, Brother Brown. A double-minded man is unstable. In other words, you have to you have to read it, you have to believe it, and then you have to speak it. Listen, find, find, when you go home, find scriptures that uh, <coughs> promise you the things uh, you're asking for, and then stand on those scriptures without doubt. Can you do that? Amen. I think you'll see things begin to change in your life. I believe whether or not your prayer is answer depends on you more than it does on God. Because we know, according to Scripture, He hears, He answers. Amen. Brother Brown, you got your Bible? Your good old-timey King James Bible. Read John 15, 7, please. John 15, 7. John, the 15th chapter, the 7th verse. John 15, 7. Getting ready to get you out of here, Brother Mendez, so your daughter won't be upset with you. You got it, Brother Brown? Read it. Yeah. Read it, please. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Stop. If, if, That's right. if you abide in me, if my words abide, abide, if you live in me, 
And if my words live in you. Is that what it's saying? You need to get your strong concordance out. Go ahead, Brother Brown. And you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. When? Me. When? When you abide in Him, and His words abide in you. Is that right or not? If you abide in me, and if my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be, it shall be, it shall, not maybe, it shall, a powerful, possessive word. Is that right, Ed? It shall be done unto you. Amen. Oh my, the word is so good. Listen, God promised Noah that he would destroy the world by the flood, and he did. <laughs> God promised Abraham a son in his old age. And he gave him one, didn't he? God promised Israel a Messiah would come. And he did, didn't he? It didn't he? Yes. That's just to mention a few of the. I think there's 3,200 promises of God. And now I want you to know something. He has promised you and me eternal life. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's promised you and I healing promised you and i deliverance he's promised you and i provision he's promised you and i all these things by simply believing in his only begotten crucified buried and risen son is that right that's all that's all it takes my friends to receive the promises of god Now I want to read to you the final thing tonight, today. I want you to get a hold of this. Turn with me to Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Oh, I know you all know. We know all these scriptures. Pastor, you use them all the time. Well, if you truly believe them and you use them all the time, we would be the most victorious church in the spirit of anyway. His final, final promise to us is in Revelation, the 22nd chapter. He which testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. Surely I come quickly. And like the other promises of our holy God, it will very soon be fulfilled. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you believe that? Amen. Oh, I believe that. Well, how about believing the other things that we talked about? The healing, the deliverance, and the provision. Amen. Amen. I wish he'd come right now, Marie, so I could get out of this stinking wicked world. That's not scriptural, honey. Well, the Bible says endure and occupy until I come. You have a job to do. Amen. There's Amen. thousands of people out there that don't know Christ. Listen, the Savior is sitting on the right hand of the Father now, and it's up to you to proclaim the good news of the gospel. It's up to you to tell him that surely he comes quickly. Amen. Don't try and run away from him. Do you know what they call somebody in the service if you run away from a battle? A traitor. Amen. You go AWOL. They'll get you. I'm telling you, don't go AWOL from the gospel. Amen. Jesus is calling you today. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm telling you exactly the way it is. Too many of these motivation, money-hungry preachers out there, I'm telling you things that will give you the victory in this life. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Now I want you to sing that to him like you mean it as a real, real song of gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole.
Amen. 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 I love you. Anybody need prayer? Come on up here. Uh-huh.